Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 20185. This build includes nothing really. Um, we're taking a look at this build because there is a hidden feature that I think is worth a video walkthrough. Uh, today we are taking a look at an actual new improvement for touch users and that's with this new touch keyboard. Um, it has new sounds, it has new UI, better animations. I'll demo it now for you just to sort of give you an idea. Uh, so if we open up say the Word app here and begin typing into this text field, we could say, I don't know, the usual. There you are. So there's some of the new sounds, some of the new animations when you tap on the key and stuff. And it's really a nice improvement. And it's a much nicer keyboard experience compared to the old one, which was very static and uh, design using the old design language. It was using the MDL2 design language. This is using Fluent Design. And although it doesn't look like it here, you can see some of the keys around it. But if we click on the Undock button here, you'll see that it has translucency effects. So if you minimize this window, you'll see that my background blurs through the keyboard just like that. And honestly, I think it looks really quite nice. Um, if we dock it back up here, it also supports swipe typing. This is swipe typing. That was definitely not how you spell typing. There we go. Now, swiping isn't new to this keyboard, but it is here and it works quite nicely. We've also got our voice dictation button. It has moved from up here. It was sort of at the top before. It's now down by the space bar. But it works as you would expect because I am now voice dictating in this document and it looks to be working okay. No. <laughs> it's giving it a cry, giving it a go. Actually, it's not too bad. I'm just terrible at talking, apparently. Anyway, that's enough of that. Uh, that's voice dictation. Again, that's technically not new to this, but it's here and it's working as expected. Um, if we press on Control here, you'll see some of the other animations. Brief, very subtle animations, uh, but you see things like select all, undo, cut, copy, paste, sort of fade in there, and they look real nice. So I can select all and delete that. Now, looking at the actual keyboard itself, there's a sort of button up here where we can tap on, which will take us to our emoji UI as well as GIF support and more. So this is sort of new for this keyboard experience. In fact, this is the same keyboard experience found on Windows 10X. If you've played around in the Windows 10X builds or if you've seen my Windows 10X hands on, you'll probably recognize this UI. This is essentially the wonder bar on Surface Neo, but here on Windows 10 instead. So we have our emojis here, uh, our most used emojis. We also have our most recently used GIFs. Um, then we have our Calmojis over here. And then we have our symbols, which you can get access to, and our clipboard as well. So if we take a look at, say, the emoji UI here, all of our emojis are here to be accessed. We can even search emojis. So let's search for smile. There we go. Do that one. Cool emoji. Super nice. Let's give it a that. We can also scroll through here and put, say, the eye emoji. Why not? Uh, then we've also got different categories up here. So I can choose between people or objects or food or cars for some reason. <laughs> or I guess like location based things. We also have, um, so I guess, miscellaneous stuff here. Um, but that's all pretty nice. So all of the areas are categorized up, which is makes things super easy to look for. Now, we also have GIF support here, as I mentioned. Now, not every text field will support GIFs. Uh, Word isn't one of them, for example. But emails, you can insert GIFs into an email. So we'll do that here. Let's say, I don't know, this one. There it is. That's now in the email. And I can send that off, which is super nice. We've also got quick access to things like our cow emojis or your bog standard um, sort of symbol based emojis here. Then you've also got actual emojis here. So if you're looking for, say, an M dash, you can go into here and look for that, which is super nice. And uh, then we've also got our clipboard, as I mentioned. So if we copy some text here, let's put. Uh, oops, let's try this is a test. It's about test wrong, but that's OK. And press cut. You'll see that it actually shows up here as a sort of quick access to paste. But also if I go into here and go to my clipboard, you'll see it shows up there as well. And that will show text and pictures, I believe. So if you copied a picture to your clipboard, it will show up in this UI. And that's pretty nice. You can also clear all from this area. We've also got different sort of keyboard modes. We've got the default one here. We've also got small keyboard. So this makes it tiny. So if you're using it on a small tablet, you can actually use your thumb to swipe through like, like so, like so. Pretty nice. 
who's got the split keyboard, which, you know, if you're using a bigger tablet and you need to type with both hands, you can do that using the split keyboard. We've also got traditional, which is sort of like the default one, except way more buttons on screen. So we have things like a function key now, as well as alt um, and the other alt. So many buttons here uh, that you can mess around with, which is super nice. This is great if you're on a tablet with a big screen. Like, for example, I'm actually doing this demo on a Surface Book 3 15 inch. 15 inches is massive for a tablet. So this keyboard is actually really quite nice for this big screen. Uh, but then we've also got one more, I believe. We've also got handwriting. So if you have a Surface Pen like I do, you can write. Oh. Like this. I'm terrible with handwriting as you can see but it works and it seems to understand me almost <laughs> but you know close enough and then we go back to the default one here as well. Uh, there's also keyboard settings which will take you into the settings app which you can customize more. We still have our typing insights which again isn't new to this build but uh, nice to see that it's still here and working as intended. Um, but yeah, that's a very quick look at the new touch keyboard. Now, in addition to the touch keyboard, uh, Microsoft is also updating the emoji panel because they're technically one of the same thing. Um, again, if you've seen my Windows 10X preview video, um, this isn't new to you, but it is new to Windows 10. So I figured I'd share it off here. So if you press the Windows key and emoji button, um, here's what it looks like. And it's quite nice. Again, using sort of fluent design effects here. So we've got this nice acrylic effect, which allows your wallpaper to blur through has got quick access to things like the latest GIFs, cow emoji, symbols, uh, standard emoji, and it's also categorized just like it is in the touch keyboard up here as well. And we also have access to our clipboard still, which is super nice. Now it's worth noting these features aren't enabled by default in the build. For some reason, Microsoft likes to hide features until they're ready to announce them, which I think is ridiculous. Just put them in the builds and let us test it. But anyhow, if you want to enable it, I'll show you how right now. So go to google.com. Uh, search for Vive Tool GitHub. We go to this link here. I'll put these links in the description as well. Uh, download Vive Tool or the latest version of Vive Tool. Uh, show in folder. Okay, so from here, make sure you just extract it like so. Now to get the program to run, we don't double click it. We go up to File, Open PowerShell as Administrator. Press yes, um, and then type CMD. From here, we type Vive Tool, add config, then the following ID, 2043851. So that's 2043851, then press space, then press two, press enter. Then it, should, then it should say successfully set feature configuration. Then we have to do is restart your computer and that will enable both the new touch keyboard and emoji panel. Uh, like I said, this isn't officially in testing in the build. So if you don't do that, you won't actually get this new touch keyboard experience. You'll just have the old one until Microsoft is ready to give it to you in a future build. Uh, but if you want to try it out today, you can do as I just showed you and uh, that will enable the feature. So there you have it, a very quick look at the new touch keyboard experience hidden in build 2185. Hopefully Microsoft enables it soon. They should have enabled it ages ago really, but better late than never. Thank you so much for watching and we shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.